temporal copies of the Cabal invasion. Hey, what is going on, my friends? My name is Adam, otherwise known as Lord of Wolves 92, and today I'm going to show you how I use Destiny Item Manager to make loadouts or builds in Destiny so that you can tackle those harder levels like Nightfalls, Grandmaster Nightfalls, Raids, or even the Crucible. So today we're going to make an entirely brand new build on my Warlock. It's my one character that I don't have a lot of builds for just yet. And I wanted to show this to you basically live on how I go about making builds and using Destiny Item Manager as a tool to do that. So first things first, we're going to go over here to the Loadout Optimizer. Now, I definitely recommend that if you use DIM yourself, you go ahead and check out their official video on YouTube on how to actually use this item manager or this loadout optimizer more efficiently but this thing is awesome i'll, I'll go over it briefly but I'll, i want to really show you um how i use it and utilize it And if you want to get into the nitty-gritty of what everything does uh, definitely check out this video it's just right here and i'll also put a link in the description below excuse me so warlock the first thing that i think of when it comes to difficult activities nightfalls raids and such is well right well of radiance and so i want to use an exotic all of my builds that i ever play with or build around always focus on an exotic and then everything else builds out from there or branches out from there right so the one exotic that i really want to use for this particular activity for grandmaster nightfalls and such is going to be this one here the phoenix protocol chess piece and so the phoenix protocol has this really cool perk called battle hearth kills and assists you make while standing in your well of radiance return super energy so we put down a well we kill some enemies we kill some bad guys we get some assists we'll get more well energy back and we'll have more uptime on our wells um, in these really hard activities and this one also drops 64 so really cool so what we're going to do we're going to take this piece of armor and we're going to drag it over here to lock the item and so that way destiny item manager locks our exotic piece of armor to that one item so it's not going to show us any other exotics and it's not going to show us any other chest pieces it's always going to be the phoenix protocol chest armor you can see that by looking all the way down here all of these builds that destiny item manager found for us are using this phoenix protocol chest piece now, you can do that other ways. So if, if, for instance, we wanted to do something like um, Geomag Stabilizers, right? Geomag. We would go over to the search option and type it in here and it would find it. You would drag it and you would lock it. So if we wanted to build uh, an Arc Warlock, a Chaos, a, what is it? Chaos, uh, Chaos Reach Warlock. There we go. I almost said Chaos Control like I'm Shadow the Hedgehog or something. A Chaos Reach Warlock, we would drag that over. But we're not doing that. We're doing a Well Warlock. So let's go find the Pro. Whoops. Phoenix, Phoenix Protocol, right there. Lock that on there, perfect. Now, what I wanna do, and what I suggest you do at home, is find out the two stats that you wanna build your character around and really dive into those. If you don't like focusing on two stats, I understand, but for me, I get the most out of my characters when I focus on two particular stats. And for this build, it's gonna be intellect and it's gonna be recovery. So I'm gonna come over here to the left and I'm gonna choose my intellect and I'm gonna drag that all the way to the top. And then I'm gonna choose recovery and drag that all the way to the top. And that should change the armor that you see over here. So if I drag recovery down, it's gonna change the armor pieces that Dim is finding for us because it's trying to build out as much as we can in those areas by using the items that we chose. So you can do it like this, and this would be a perfect build. It's tier 24, which means if you add up all of the stats here, it should equal 24, right? 5, 10, 13, 17, 20, 24, perfect, right? But you can even go a step further by telling Dim that you don't care about the other stats, because right now I don't. I don't care about my dis discipline. I don't care about my resilience. Whoops. I don't care about my strength. And now it's going to really maximize these two ones that we chose, intellect and recovery. So this is a tier 21 build in total, but the only stats that we're looking at in intellect and recovery is tier 13. So we have a seven intellect and a six recovery, and that's without mods. So that's awesome. That means that we can start modding this out. If we wanted to hit tier 10 in intellect, we would be using three of our mods for that. If we wanted to do tier 10 in recovery, we would use four mods for that. So we'd have to pick which one we want to max out and not be maxing the other. But if we come over here and click assume masterwork to what it's going to do, well, it's going to choose all the art, uh, the armor pieces where if they were theoretically masterworked would give us the highest roll. So I believe it didn't change our helmet. Yeah, so you can see as I click this on and click this off, it doesn't actually change any armor in the top row, which is nice. Or any armor, really. That means we've got some pretty good, pretty good rolls on that. So if we were to masterwork all of these armor pieces here, 
we would be at eight intellect, seven recovery, which means we'd only need two mods for intellect and three for recovery. So we would be able to hit tier 10 on both. And that's awesome. That's kind of what I'm going for, um, for all of my builds. So we're going to, we're going to keep assume master worked on just because, and now this is going to show us all of the armor here, but you can see some of the armor has a swap out button, choose another item. This is primarily going to be on your ghosts and maybe your class items, but sometimes it'll appear on other items as well. So for instance, if we go down to this tier down here, it's still a tier eight, uh, excuse me, a tier eight, tier six, which is not bad. And it gives us options to swap around. So maybe we want to consider those, especially if we're trying to find different, um, affinities on our armor so maybe we don't want void boots maybe we want something like uh these arc boots right here right so we can click that and this this would still be a tier 7 tier 7 but i think we want to stick with this up here because we want to get our intellect as high as possible to get as many wells as possible we really really need our wells so we'll stick with this up here whoops we don't want to lock that we want to unlock that and that'll give us back these thorium holt boots which are actually okay because these are void and you'll see later, but we're gonna be using some hand cannons in this build. So we want void stuff. So we'll click plus loadout. Let's name this something fun. Now it's gonna automatically generate um, some numbers here. I'm gonna change this to lots of wells. So lots of wells, click the save. Now we can go to our inventory. And if we click on our warlock, Right over here on the drop down menu, we're gonna see the lots of wells build. So if we look at our character right now, right? We've got some different armor on. There's not a lot of anything else going on, except maybe, I think maybe the the um, ghost shell is the same. But if we click on our lots of wells build, it's gonna start moving all of our items onto our character and actually equipping them. So you can see, wow, that's actually really fast. All of our items are already equipped on our character, whoops. And so that way you can easily move between builds. Maybe you just finished a raid and you want to go play Crucible. Well, you come over here, you click your Crucible build and boom, Bob's your uncle. You got your Crucible gear on, right? So that's that's why having loadouts is so useful because you can quickly jump between activities. So now we've chosen our armor pieces. What you can do, let's load up our game real quick. Oops. What we can do now that we're in the game is start building out from there. So we have two different options. We can start choosing weapons we want, or we can start putting perks on that'll dictate those weapons. But what I like to do is I like to choose my weapons first. So we already have our 60 here and our 70 here. Now we're gonna be going into Grandmaster Nightfalls where there are champions. So we definitely wanna make sure that we have some champion builds ready. And the first weapon I think of when it comes to champions is the Ariana's Vow. So we're gonna equip that. That's gonna be our exotic of choice. Now it's got a scope which means it's a long range type weapon. It uses special ammo and it can deal piercing damage, which is perfect for high level activities. Next, I'm gonna choose a sword and it's gonna be this Night Terror here because swords in this season have the Disrupting Blade perk. We can disrupt those champions. We can actually attack through elemental shields. So in high level activities, when a lot of different, Master Ahul, I'm trying to talk here, man. Can you chill? When we do high level activities, where there's gonna be a lot of different shields, if we're not able to match all the different shield types, well, our sword comes in handy because those actually deal damage through shields. So we've got our exotic, which pierces. We've got our heavy, which deals disrupting blade and goes through energy shields. Our kinetic is kind of up in the air, but I'm gonna choose a weapon that maybe can round out all three so that our teammates can focus on DPS. They can focus on enemies. They can focus on dealing damage. And so we have pierce, we have disrupt. Now we need stagger. Well, I'm going to choose another hand cannon that has stagger here. This is my true prophecy that I got. It's got overflow and it's got rampage. So this is a great, a great role to have when paired with the Ariana's Vow. Because whenever we pick up ammo for the Ariana's Vow or our Night Terror, it's going to instantly overload the true prophecy, which also has rampage. So as we take out small level adds, we're going to be increasing the amount of damage we do. And that can help us fight those unstoppable champions. But now we've got a weapon that matches every single enemy type. And we've also got a weapon that can go through enemy barriers. So we are a super duper support role. Now that we've got our weapons picked out, I'm going to go over to the side here and we're going to start putting in perks. That makes sense. I'm not going to masterwork them yet. I don't have all the materials I need to masterwork everything yet, but this is a generic build to start off. And now we'll know what we want to masterwork and what we need to infuse. So this Vigil of Heroes here, I always bring my, my items up to 5 energy because that's the maximum you can go without spending enhancement cores. So, this one is uh, solar. If we wanted to, we can move it to void so that it can support finding our, uh, our um, ammo for our hand cannons. And I think that's what we might just do. So, we're going to move this over to void. And we're going to start putting on 
our hand cannon finder perks, which if I can see correctly, there we go. So that's going to find some ammo for our hand cannons. Now it does say primary. I'll have to test and see if that only affects our true prophecy, not our Ariana's vow. To be safe though, I guess we could just go special ammo finder. Now we have one extra perk here. We can spend it on kind of whatever we want. In the future, when these are fully masterworked, I'd probably go something charged with light and have like protective light, which is right here. While charged with light, you gain significant damage resistance against combatants when your shields are destroyed. This effect consumes all stacks of charged with light. This way, we have a super huge damage buff. I'm sorry, a super huge health buff. Um, so we don't get killed during these crazy activities because in Grandmaster Nightfalls or in raids, revives are limited, you know? So maybe we should actually consider that. Let's take that off real quick. Let's put that on. Let's take up two, and now we can put on this one here, and we can still have one more perk. Now, Void Resistance Mod or Major Minor Concussive Dampener, I always go with these ones. If you check out Rostophilus' YouTube channel, he does builds like this as well. He's a great guy. I love him. Check him out as well. He can explain to you why you want to do these mods over the Void Resistance mod, so we're going to do a Major Resist. And now our helmet, for now, without spending any enhancement cores, is all nice and set up with our build for Grandmaster Nightfalls. We've got a Major Resist mod, we've got a Hand Cannon Finder, which hopefully will find us ammo for the Ariana's Vow as well. But if not, we can always take off uh, our mods and redo them, or maybe spend just one core and then put in the um, Special Ammo Finder. Let's go check out our arms. Now our arms are Arc and... Although we are using hand cannons which are void, even though our gloves are arc, we actually want to keep it this way because of this perk right here. Enhanced impact induction. Causing damage with a melee attack greatly reduces your grenade cooldown. We super duper want that because if we ever are being attacked and swarmed by red bar enemies and we don't have our grenade that we could use as a healing grenade, we can smack an enemy and get some grenade energy back and get us that much closer to having our healing grenades back. So we'll use all of our energy to put that on. Let's go over a chest piece here. We already have some perks in here. Let's get rid of those and re-evaluate uh, these. So once again, this is arc. We could go void for perks that increase our uh, heavy ammo. Or, I'm sorry, our ammo with um, hand cannons. Or we could just go light arms reserves, which is going to do the same thing. So let's turn that on there. We could go Inferno Whip so that this gives us another way of staggering enemies without having to use our hand cannon. But I think because our hand cannon is just so useful anyways, we're going to go another major resist mod here. So we've got two major resist mods in total now, and then Light Arms Reserves for both of our hand cannons. Alright, let's look at our boots now. What can we do with our boots? Well, we can put Enhanced Sword Scavenger on for more sword for our Night Tear. We can also do the Special Ammo Scavenger for picking up Ariana's Vow. And actually, we can do both of those. It's perfect. So we'll do just that. Now, if we had more energy, maybe we could take off the Sword Scavenger and put on these Hand Cannon Dexterity mods. Or maybe take off the Special Ammo Scavenger. But this is fine right now, too. I like having ammo, and I feel in PvE, we can find the time to switch our weapons. All right, now our Bond. Our Bond is really critical. I don't like uh, using anything but Solar for hard activities because, and let me show you here, our bond's also very easy to swap out too. Where's our solar ones? Let's choose, this one is 105, so let's equip that one. Solar class items come with the re, uh, recuperation perk that says replenishes health each time you pick up an orb of light. Now that's super critical and that's definitely different from the void perk, which is better already which says your health begins to regenerate immediately after picking up an orb of light. That is different. Regeneration can be uh, stopped. So if you start to regenerate and then it immediately get shot by an enemy, you basically didn't pick up an orb of light and you didn't get any health back from it. So I always like to use that recuperation perk on our bonds in hardcore activity. So we're gonna keep it solar. We've already got recuperation perfect. We can take off Rage of the Warmind. And since we're using that other ability that allows us to take less damage when our shields are popped, we need to find a way to become charged with light. Now we can do that by finishing enemies, but finishing enemies is pretty risky in high level activities. We can do that by breaking shields, or we can do that by um, picking up orbs of light. And it really doesn't matter which one you pick. I think for this instance, I would be choosing the shield break charge because that allows us to put on more perks. And we can do something like getting more grenade energy when we use our class abilities. So this is perfect. Now, whenever we make an orb of light, we'll be able to heal ourselves, 
whenever we put down a well, we'll be getting our grenade energy back and be getting even more energy because of the subclass we chose. And whenever we pop an enemy shield, we'll be able to charge ourselves with light and take less damage when our shield is popped itself. A very cool synergy there. Once we take this to full masterwork, we could even put in some other mods here. Uh, like I said, this could be, you know, another recovery mod to bring it to fully 10 energy and to really max out our recovery. So that's going to be our character build for right now. The next step I would do is start uh, infusing everything. Once I get to 110, these would all be infused up to 110. These guys would bring uh, be brought up to 110 as well. And I can start bringing mods in as well to fill out our recovery stat, fill out our intellect stat. And then the very next and very final and most important, arguably, step to building a build in Destiny 2 is the looks. You got to change how you look, right? You got to make sure it looks good. I like this one because it fits the ornate uh, ornament we have on our chest piece. We'll change it there. We can keep the shader on for now. It kind of fits the blue that's on our chest piece. Let's make sure our arms are the right uh, ornament as well. Let's see what fits there. I like the Lux gloves because, once again, it's very... Very ornate, just like the gold of that phoenix. So let's do that, but how does it look if we just take the shader off? Doesn't look much better. I don't know what this effect is over here, but I guess we'll do that. So what's cool and that a lot of people don't know is if you're previewing something and you like what you're previewing, you can just click on the boxes and it'll automatically apply it. So obviously we're not going to change our chest. Our boots, I mean, this is a warlock. It doesn't really matter too much, but might as well. Let's put it on the Lux soles. Once again, gold matches. Oops. It matches our chest piece. And then with our bond, uh, let's see if we can do something more fun. Now, we're a phoenix. We want to rise from the ashes, right? Is there any bird we can do? There is a bird on the crucible one, and it is solar. Huh. So maybe we do this one here. And we just, what did we have here? We had shield break. We had recuperation and we needed the this one here even faster cooldown we want to invest in enhancement core uh, we've got 140 let's do it right there it's the price of fashion right now do we have any cooler ones what's the difference between these two literally just a lighter shade well that's kind of boring if we take this off hmm Kind of like it without the shader. It brings a little bit more color. So let's do that. Or uh, ornament, rather. So there we go. Here is our high level end build for the Warlock class. It's going to focus on resilient, I'm sorry, recovery and intellect. We don't even have it fully masterworked or anything, but we do definitely have our weapon set up for higher level nightfalls. You can see we can do 1000 nightfalls, no problem. We can even try going to the 1030 nightfalls as well. And then we have some synergistic perks on our armor that we can uh, use to the fullest advantage. Make sure we're on the correct subclass here. Do solar grenades as well. So well of Radiance, we've got Divine Protection, Holding Q, Convert Your Grenade into a, a Blessing that heals targets. Then Strike an Enemy with this melee ability to inflict burn and empower yourself. Then Healing or Empowering Allies gives you Grenade Melee and ener Rift Energy. So everything is going to be flowing into each one another. And it's going to be... A very fun and synergistic build. So that's going to be the video for now, guys. Thank you so much for stopping by the channel. If you want to support me, make sure you subscribe, hit the bell, and turn on all notifications so that you can be notified when I post more videos in the future. I do definitely plan on making more guides and more videos, and I want to get better at it. So please, guys, if you have any uh, uh, feedback for me, any criticism or comments, make sure you leave it down in the comment section below so I can be a better uh, YouTube person for you guys and you guys can get better content on your end too. Alright guys, until the next video, bye for now.